Good morning, everybody, or actually, it's afternoon. This is Osiris, writer for the Cover City News, Unk Entertainment, Stones in the Color of Her blog, and your weekly show host for 15 minutes. I am at the famous Celeste King III. I'm in his home today in the Crenshaw area. And the late Celeste King, as you, some of you may know, he was a Tuskegee Airman. He was also one of the United States Brigadier Generals. And we have the pleasure of today interviewing Mr. Jimmy Two Drum, Two Drum James and Dr. Craig Woodson from the Roots and Rhythm uh, organization out of Cleveland. So stay tuned and I'll be right back. Hey everybody, it's Osiris with uh, Cover City News. Ank Entertainment Stones in the color of her blog and your weekly host for 15 minutes of show. Okay, now today I am sandwiched between two very famous men that you may not have heard of them, but I guarantee you that by the time we finish this interview, you will know exactly who they are. To my left, Dr. Craig Woodson hey. from Roots and Rhythm out of Cleveland, Ohio. Is that right? Yes. Uh, the organization, it's a world-renowned organization that he started. We're going to talk to him a little bit more about that. And to my right, I have the incredible Mr. Drummer, percussionist himself, Jimmy Two Drum James. Say hey. Hey, hello. Say hey, Craig. Hey, Craig. <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, Craig, now Dr. Craig, you are visiting us here in our lovely city of Los Angeles. Yes. And tell us something about why you're here, how you started your organization, and what inspires you to keep doing percussions. This is about percussions, not just instruments. Let's talk percussions. Yes. Uh, well, I started at age nine uh, playing the drums and got into making drum heads and tucking them when I was 13. Started fixing drums, went off to UCLA, found a collection of uh, drums from Africa. I started studying African drumming in the 60s, and some of the drums broke, so I started fixing them, and mm -hmm. then got, it in, got into um, uh, uh, making prototypes of new designs, and then went to, to North Africa in 1970. I saw some drums on the way back that were made with uh, fiberglass and plastic that were from Africa. So mm -hmm. I thought, okay, if Africans are going to do it, I'm going to try it. So I okay. started making different types of technology using higher technology. Then I got an invite uh, to go to Africa and start working there. So I was there for three years. Where did you work? In, in, what organization? in, in Ghana for the University of Science and Technology. Oh my goodness. It was the Center for Cultural Studies. So oh. I directed the Musical Instrument Technology Workshop there. It's still going 30 years later, mm -hmm. uh, making instruments for schools and making new designs and, and instruments, but basically all types, not just percussion, but all kinds of instruments. And we'd go out and, and rescue instruments like the Sepulwa, some of the instruments, the string instruments that were dying uh, because of underuse, and now they're, they're having a resurgence because of that. So that began my, the, the African connection, but then I started showing, uh, seeing instruments and showing young people how to make simple instruments, because you can do that with simple instruments. Here's a, for example, if I may, the, the real talking, this is the one that really took my, what is my this breath drum? What is this drum called? This is called the dondo. Because dondo. It's, it's actually dondo. Dondo. It says its name. It so. sounds like dondo. <laughs> That's right. So it's, uh, it's from Ghana, and it, I, I'd never seen anything like it, where you squeeze it and it changes the pitch. Oh, so you hug it. This yeah, is up close and personal. It's a, it's a hug drum. Oh. But you can play... Classical music there, okay. Mozart. So you can play songs on it. But I said I want to be able to make a simple one. So I came up with some simple technology so the kids, you know, everywhere could make. And what is this one called? This is the same thing, but it's just simple technology. These are cans from a pizza store and embroidery hoops and tacky packaging tape. Kids in West Africa will take rubber from a tree and wrap it around a can to make a drum. Okay, so now he brought up a good point. Did you hear what the man said? <laughs> I don't want to hear about no what you don't have. These kids take rubber from a tree and make a drum. That means you can go out and find sticks, wood, almost anything, as long as you can create a hollow sound yeah. that it can sound like a drum. So, okay, yeah. no excuses. You can put it right over the can without any of this fancy anything. You just take tape and wrap it around. And what I, kind of can is that? Uh, cheap. Oh, oh, <laughs> oh! it looks what? like one of those big bean cans that you find at Costco. Yeah, <laughs> it is. It's a school can. You get them at pizza stores. Yeah, this is simple. You a can of peaches. Off. Yeah, and it's a, it, that special name. It's called Cheap Tape. This is the cheapest tape you can buy. Oh, my gosh. Because it stretches, and that's what a drum head oh, has to do. Wow. 
Dome, dome, yeah. dome, dome. And these are embroidery hoops. I just wrapped some colorful tape around it. And, uh, and then you crisscross it, make sure it's like a tic-tac-toe pattern because it turns out that the structure of the tape uh, has to have that crisscross, otherwise it'll break. So Not crisscross the hip-hop group, crisscross the drum crisscross style. Tic-tac-toe, that's the new <laughs> hip-hop group called tic-tac-toe. So in wow. the process, I uh, was invited to write this Roots of Rhythm uh -huh. book, the first volume here for the Roots of Rhythm World Drumming for All Ages, chapters 1 through 10. And it's free, and it's online. You can download this entire book oh. for free and more. There's a second. Where, where, where online? We're, uh, it's called rootsofrhythm.net. Okay. Rootsofrhythm.net. Okay. And it's for the Percussion Marketing Council and the NAM Foundation. The NAM Foundation is the, the big... The NAM, like the National the Association Nash, of Mar it, Marketing and Merchandisers. They, wow. are, they have been underwriting this for 10 years. Oh my goodness. The NAM so what, what, what brought it to light now? Just your involvement or...? I wrote it. So, I mean, I wrote the book and now I do teacher workshops around the country. Mm -hmm. So these teacher workshops uh, enable teachers and it's pretty much a free workshop they can come. I'm doing one this coming Saturday on, on African drumming. We'll be using that drum. Where is that going to be? It'll be at the Remo Center coming up here in the uh, Remo Recreational Music Center in uh, on, uh, co on uh, Coldwater uh, north of uh, Sherman Way. Okay, so it's over in, the, in uh, North Hollywood. North Hollywood. Yeah. Okay. And so I do periodic workshops there, but I do them all over the country on this. Uh, on this curriculum, and it's just a fabulous free online. It's got chapters on uh, background. It's got a simple, easy to read notation. Nice pictures, yeah, color. Color. It's all in color. Native American. Oh my god. And goodness. it's all been uh, gone through by people from the various cultures. I'm not an expert in all cultures, so I go to the people who are my friends. Absolutely. Uh, Kevin Locke is this famous uh, a hoop dancer, and he he read the the Native American drum and mm -hmm. and uh, made changes as needed. Uh, anyway, and so it's really for teachers, but students can go on and download this entire book, and they can th you do the exercises, play along, and there are CDs, and I have a CD uh, that is available. What's a CD called? Uh, it's called Roots of Rhythm. Roots of Rhythm CD. So we've got a CD you can buy, and then we're going to talk to. It's all free. Oh wow! It's all free. Wow. All free. That's yeah. even better. Yeah. And this has got books that you can actually get that are uh, in Roots your with them. Okay. Recommended, recommended reading. reading. Right. And then mm -hmm. this one shows the academic content standards. If I can pull it out real fast here. And I don't think it's really fast being pulled out. You have That's to edit okay. This out. Just take your time. Um, but yeah, you don't want well, to rip it or anything. Yeah. So this has got the academic content standards that oh, are approached, wow. like the core, common core that are out there, mm -hmm. that we had people go through the book and find what the Common Core connections were. So it's all on here from K through 12. Oh, so wow. all of the connections, so a teacher says, well, I gotta take it to my PTA and ask for, you know, if it's okay to use this in the curriculum, it's all in here. Okay. So it, we wanted to make sure the academic part of so it. So there are no limitations. Now, we wanna talk to Jimmy just a minute. Now, Jimmy, I know both you and Craig, yeah. even though he's a PhD, he's doctorate, right, yeah. but we're going to call him Craig. Yeah, we are. Um, I know both of you are percussionists, yes. and yes. in my opinion, percussions are like none other. You can make uh, percussions out of cans. You can. It's that sound that is hard to replicate. You really have to know tone and sound. And so, because Jimmy. James here. We call him Two Drum Jimmy James for a reason. He is the only person on the planet that we know of that has been able to patent a conga drum or a drum out of one piece of wood from Ghana. Ghana. And it's got two heads. So let's talk to him a little bit about that. Jimmy. Uh, yes. Go. Talk about your drum. Ask me a question. Yes. <laughs> well, so we're talking about your drum. So talk about how you started the drum, what you, the concept, what you came up with how you came up with a concept and who helped you put it together. Okay, um, what happened, I had a dream. Okay. I was dream I was and sleeping. not Martin Luther's, he no, had a different my dream. dream. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, what's so strange about it, I was in this dream, I don't know where I was, I was sitting somewhere and then all of a sudden this drum appeared and I just started playing it and the same sound that was in my dream, I knew it was gonna be the same sound once I bring it into existence. Mm -hmm. So what happened is I jumped out of my dream. I was still half sleeping in the twilight. I tore the curtains down and I fell against and knocking. He was wild down. and bourbon in his dream. Everybody thought I was having a heart attack or stroke oh or something. <laughs> <laughs> so I started saying, where's a pencil and paper? Where's a pencil and paper? So and you it, literally got up like any other musician and you like, okay, I got a song in my head. This one came, I got a drum in my head. Yeah, I'm going to design. Yes, it came out of the dream. So I found a pencil and paper and I sketched it out. And this was at what, three in the morning? 
about uh, no, maybe about seven o'clock in the morning, something okay. like that. All right. And it was back in two thousand eight. So that's when you first came up with the concept in two thousand eight. Yes. So I kept it to myself for a whole year. Then I decide. Why did you keep it to yourself? Well, you know, if you spread the word, somebody else might grab it. Oh, you know, before okay. I had so a patent. So we were protecting the yeah and your I, idea. Yes. And the and far as the the, the design, I had that copywritten first because okay. the patent office lets you copywritten. Um, you know, designs and uh -huh. stuff like that. Yes, you have and, copyright. And then I took the design to Motherland's Music with Dan, and before I went to Dan, I called Remo and all these different companies. They said, oh, there's no such thing as a two-headed drum. You're wasting your time and that dream. So in other words, they didn't believe that someone could come up with a concept to make one drum with two heads, basically. Right, right. And so who finally um, gave you the impetus to or inspired you to continue your work or to bring your dream about? Well, Dan, and we... The guy at he, World, uh, what did you call Motherland Music? Motherland's Music with yes. Dan. Oh. So I took... Dan, the, what's Dan's last name? Uh, Rice. Dan Rice. And okay. I took the design to him. Thanks, Dan. He said it. I know. One for him, my dream wouldn't even exactly. came true. So he sent it to Ghana, and he mm -hmm. sent it to Iwana. So you want it, then get back. Ghana got back and said, hey, that's that guy. Where you get this weird horny looking drum from? This design. This <laughs> the, the, weird, the, the funny part is that the, the drum looks like a woman's body. It's shaped like a torso, <laughs> like a woman's hips would curve around the yeah. side. And, you know, for a minute there, I thought maybe we could use it for to put bikinis. Well, you know, something on, on it. You never know. But anyway, so, so after he sent it to Ghana and Iwana. Ghana, Ghana, Ghana yes. got back mm -hmm. and to Dan and said, we can do it. Because my family been uh, making drums for 200 years. Oh, wow. So they went out in the jungle. They cut this, this, these two huge uh, trees down. What kind of trees? I think it's it's made out of epa. Epa wood, like uh -huh. a fruit tree from Ghana. Okay, yeah. It's a softwood. It is that, it's a softwood. Oh, so yeah. easy to carve. And yeah, it was easy to carve. Okay. And he didn't want to get hardwood because the drum had been too heavy or right. something. Yeah. And to go. Was yeah. It was used for big master drums for the right. Rosanti. Yeah. To go to production. Yeah. So he carved it out. And I said, make sure you take pictures of everything where we can have... Uh, the idea, how it started from a log the and, and the yeah. concept, and it started going into form. And the next thing I know, he, he said, okay, it's ready. Now, so, how long did it take him to actually design the drum after you gave him the idea? About a month. Oh, wow. So he did it pretty quickly. There was a quick turnaround. Yep. Now, did you order just one of them? or did no, you have, have to just You have two drums. Yeah, and are two. they both the same color? Same color. Same color. So you have two. So you have one that is what for display, and you use both of them. Well, this one I have behind me. I use that in the band. Okay. So and I play with other percussion, electronics, and stuff, gongs and bells and okay, stuff like that. Okay. Now the camera. Hopefully, at the end, we'll take a photo of Jimmy's drum so that everybody can see it. But it's behind us. If you will notice, we're all sitting, and it's behind the little higher, little rims up there. That's Jimmy's drum. It makes it so great. It was everybody recognized. The President Obama loved it. Uh, the mayor of Los now, Angeles City President Council. When did President Obama and, the, and uh, Mayor Eric Garcetti, when did they get, have an exposure to the drum? Well, Garcetti just got in the office. The Villa Gosa gave me a, a oh, accommodation okay. on it. Okay. City Council, uh, Sacramento, okay. and a host of other uh, official people okay. recognized it. So it is a recognized drum. So now, um, is it something that is fairly easy? I guess if you can play percussion. But it's different. Anybody this can drum, play it. So what makes it different? It's different. It's like regular congas. When you play, you slap and ring, slap and ring, and choke right here. The camera. We are all over the place today, people. And we just know that we are talking to the bomb. Two percussionists here. One on my left, one on my right. Jimmy Two Drum James, who's going to do a demonstration for us, Jimmy, on the drum right now. Get over there and do a demonstration. Well, I think you might have to do the interview. And then we're going to do talk to uh, Craig again about his work. And so right now, let's talk to Jimmy about doing the drum. Jimmy, you were saying that uh, Dan Rice from uh, Mother Motherland's, Mu Music. Motherland's Music gave you your start. He's the one that believed in your idea. And then you got some endorsements from the mayor at the time, Mayor Villagorosa. I always get tied with his name, Villagorosa. Villagorosa. And uh, also some commendations from various entities across the state across the nation, including our own President Obama. Craig, on the other hand, you have been marketing your expertise in various countries. For instance, Ghana, you also got invited to start a teacher's workshop there. Teacher, right? yeah. Right, teacher's workshop. And now, we want to do a demonstration of both of you guys on your various instruments. So, Jimmy, you want to go first? Yes. Okay, so Jimmy's going to play, ladies. He was saying something about the sound of this particular two-headed conga. It's a ring with a choke and a slap. 
And I made the comment, that sounds like something, are you talking about doing that to a woman or a drum? <laughs> because I just thought it was funny. So here we go, let's hear it. And now if you're in your bedroom and you start wiggling and writhing, you know, that's what the drums do, they make you move. And listen to the sound. All right, woo crowd, woo wow, the crowd goes wild. All right, so now, Mr. Jimmy's gonna come back over here and sit right next to me. Yes. Thank you. And so now, what have you been able to do, and then we're gonna get back to you, yes. Craig, what have you been able to do with your instrument since discovering it? I know um, at one point you couldn't talk about it much because it needed to be patented. Right. And now that you've got all that worked out, what are your plans for, do, what are you gonna be doing with this particular instrument? Uh, shopping it around, try to get it market with different companies. Mm -hmm. uh, I got a lot of companies that's interested with it where no one have got back with me yet, but they- uh, That's okay, they in will. In the future, they will. Yes. And. Uh, I'm waiting right now on the day of the drums and watch at the Watchtower. I, and that's every year that they do the yes. day of the drums. Are you going to be here, correct, for I'm that? I'm not here for that. I'm oh, in Cleveland. Man. I've been there <laughs> many times in the past because I lived here. I've been to that. Oh, okay. Yeah. So you've Back been in here. the day. I know what it is. Yeah. yeah. So and I Jimmy, have, are you going to be actually performing in that day? Of uh, the I don't know yet. They haven't got back with me yet. You put your bid in and then they get back with you. It's like the Grammy Museum uh, with Kevin Sanaki. Uh -huh. He's a PR person that I work right. with and right. uh, he had me to submit. All my information to the Grammy Museum, so okay. they. Uh, so you just kind of wait waiting, waiting here. to everybody make a. And I line. don't see that they would say no or anything. That's a pretty big day yeah. here, so everybody that's drumming, I'm sure, is going to be there. Yeah, and I'm waiting on Dion Warwick. Um, she's writing a letter of recommendation for me for All my right. drum. Miss Warwick, yeah. hello. Yeah. Nice to see that you're involved in the community aspects here of LA, which we have such wonderful treasures here. Um, it's just amazing all of the things that you can find in the city. Now I'm going to go from you really quick back over to Craig mm -hmm. and you're going to show us some demonstrations yes. on your drums. Yeah. Now you said you found this at a yard sale for yeah. 20 bucks, yeah, dude. Yeah, that but just I, shows if you go looking, you'll find. <laughs> this is called a Tonbach and it's from Iran. And why is it called? Oh. Tonbach. Uh -huh. It's from Iran uh -huh. and it's a, it dates back 2,000 years probably. It's yeah. very ancient. This wow. is obviously turned on a lathe, but blades have been around for a long time and it's just mm -hmm. a very simple drum with a head and the way you play it and it's played for for poetry and and classical music really but it's played with this with oh and i notice that you're flicking your two fingers together or something. yeah they have almost a, like snapping the right. drum head yeah they have a double what, what like this and then the re's this one the roll that one, pretty much, I can do that roll of the finger. Uh oh, get your boogie, get and your I boogie. I found when I was in Iraq that the difference between a Kurdish rhythm and an Arabic rhythm is simply a high tone in the middle. Okay, so, so can you demonstrate I that? I can. So this rhythm is called Giryan. It's called Giryan. If you put it, say it their way, it's Giryan. Giryan. Which means the person who is crying. Oh. Yeah, and it's in 14 beats. Oh. So it goes. So wow. you hear the high sound in the middle, that, that dot makes it Kurdish. Okay. So if I play it Arabic, so, so you can hear the lower tone. There's no high tone. Oh. There's no, uh, there's no slap in the middle. Uh, but little things like that I found when I was there, and I was there on a humanitarian uh, pro program for Kurdistan. In Iran? In Iraq. Oh, Iraq. Uh, okay. In Suleiman, right where all the chaos is going on right now in Erbil. Oh, there's and, some rhythm right there. Oh. Yeah, yeah in Erbil and uh, Sulaymaniyah, these Get ancient... Don't bother them, don't chew them. 
Yeah, gotta make it worse. Freedom world. But yeah, so that was that. But in, in oh my the, gosh, we're having a bee a, invasion, a here, yeah. and so we got a little buzz going he here. Rhythm, he, said, hey, he, he heard said, the rhythm yeah. and came up like, "Look, let me get it on. <laughs> I want to get me some <laughs> rhythm." <laughs> Shoot, so, he's like, "Hey, when I, what's going just, on over I, here?" I I was fascinated by this drum uh, years ago at UCLA, and when I had been playing drums and I didn't know anything about other cultures, right? And I saw this drum. That is a. It's called dundo. Oh, that's a dundo, dundo. again. Dundo, and one yes. of the key parts. It sounds like it's saying dundo. To squeeze it under your arm to change the pitch, mm -hmm. you need this little spacer ring. Okay. So in my design of making a drum, um, this is a homemade drum, and you see the spacer ring is a big space here with the tape uh, that I made, and it's just made with uh, tape and can. No, no, a couple no. cans and some tape. The kids make the drums in West Africa with rubber wrapped over a can, so I kind of extended the idea. Mm -hmm. But this spacer thing caught my attention. And, so and that's really uh, cool. Somebody can make that right in their own backyard. Yeah, they can make an so of course, don't I, steal all of your mother's saran wrap. Yeah, 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 yeah. Pour out the <laughs> These things do cost, you know. Yeah. And the tomato paste. <laughs> So I, I was working with a Remo company, and I remembered the spacer ring. And so he has a, a drum head that is tightened in a certain process. So okay. that drum head became the basis of this. Oh. It's called the sound shape. So. And it's funny how you can hit different parts of it. You can hit. You can do all, all kinds of different things. And in fact, on this one, I put a little tape in the middle, and it loads it middle, gives it a lower pitch. Mm -hmm. yeah. And then I came up with this guy, so it enables you to tie them together in sets. Oh. So you can do this, and you can put them down on the floor and make it. So it's called a handle leg connector. Oh, wow. I call wow. it a handle leg connector. So you and can where do you find these pieces? These are, you know, online. You can buy them okay. all right. So if I just put this. So when you hit it here, it gets a sound plus that. And then you add the paste on. So I've just written a book, and it's now coming out. Hopefully, this is my prototype. It's got my scribbling up here. You got a lot of books, I yeah, tell you. Yeah, this is my new one. It's this is called cool. Drums Connect You to, to the, the world, world, and they do. And it shows how all of this can be done with the sound shapes. Here's a drum that's from. This drum is really interesting. Because it's, a it's a frame out of a movie picture. <laughs> out frame. of a picture frame. Gar, you know, uh, <laughs> when it looks like saran wrap or right. something on top of it's it. It's the same tape. Oh my stretched God. Really So tight. it's a tape, like a packing tape. It's packed, kind of but still, Ooh. yeah. It's still, Whoa. it's still yeah. really cheap for the kids. So this, you know, has to have a little angle to it. We can just nail four pieces of wood, make a picture frame. Yeah. Like. Get it. Get it, boogie, right. boogie, boogie. So you can oh, do wow. different sizes. Same wow. thing with the other drum. You can make different sizes with this. But this stuff is all just doable. I don't want to sell it particularly. Yeah, I want yeah. kids just to, to do it. To be able to make yeah. it. To be yeah. able to make it. So let's talk well, about well. let's talk about percussions. Yeah. Now I know I know both you and Jimmy. Let's talk about percussions. I know that percussions were once outlawed. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. People could not play drums. Yeah. I think probably because the women started being called out of the bedrooms and started following the beat of the drum. Yeah. Next thing you know, yeah. they're in some strange man's home. But yeah. in this case, yeah. the reason was, I think it was because African slaves and uh, they could communicate through drums and certain sounds was something like, don't go home tonight. Your house is being raided, or whatever they were talking about. So can you guys, both you and Jimmy, have a little bit of information on that? Can you both talk about that? Let's talk with Jimmy. Let's start with you about percussions. Okay. Percussions were outlawed at one point. Uh, yeah, the drums was outlawed uh, about uh, 200, 300 years ago. Mm -hmm. uh, the Indians, uh, they outlawed the drums. Um, you can go to jail back in them days, or they would hang you. Go to jail for playing yeah, a drum. Well, yeah, they had jails back in them yeah, days. So, uh, I don't know what kind of jail it was, but it was a place they put people. Because <laughs> <laughs> uh, the United States was saying to the government, if you play the drums and smoke the peace pipe, that's going to war against the United States. The best way for them to get rid of it is just take their drums from them. Wow. And then the Africans, uh, they was playing their rhythms uh, telling each other where to escape from Absolutely. slavery for that night or that day, and, and that's why they got rid of the drums. And then when the drums came back to existence, back into law, it they brought the drums back to Congo Square. Right. Now, Craig, I know that you are related to 
uh, doctor. Can I amplify on that? Yeah. yeah whoa, whoa, whoa. I'm going well, to lead really you into the yeah, question. So I know you are related to uh, Carter G. Woodson. Woodson. Yeah. Okay, and you actually brought all of those people together. Now, I know Carter G. Woodson was really back in that time when slavery was really a big deal. So can you elaborate how... Yeah. Uh, what kind of, what would you have to have been doing in order to have either bypassed this law or give us your, your exact, you know, what you thought was going on at that time? Well, to back up, my ancestors uh, came to this country in 1620, 1619 and 1620. Yes. We bought six of the first 20 Africans that came to this country. Those, those were the descendants of all Woodsons, all white and black Woodsons. Wow. Because we and were, you actually met the Woodsons. Well, we had a black-white Woodson meeting uh, at the church of James Lawson in 1998. It was an apology ceremony on my behalf. Mm -hmm. We also invited uh, the Asante people that I had worked with because those were the slave contributors in Ghana. And so now, did the slave, where, what part of Africa did the slave trade actually start from? Was it, it Ghana? I'm not sure where it started. West I mean, it Africa? started, it, Ghana was called the Slave Coast, remember, before oh, right. it was the Gold right, right. Coast, yes. before it became Ghana. Here, people. So the Asante people, and I asked my professor who invited me to Ghana in my trip over there, I said, okay. is this true? And he said, yes. Okay. And so they would have battles with the northern Mamparisi. And the Mamparisi is one of the tribes that they conquered where this drum came in. Mondo. They would take those Mamparisi, some of them, and trade them as slaves with the uh, uh, Portuguese and others mm -hmm. as they came through in mm -hmm. ships over the hundreds of years. Wow. But I didn't realize this, and we have a big, thick genealogy in our family. But I Okay, and so, Craig, so what happened to what happened with you and your genealogy? You were saying they were the first African slaves to come over with the Woodson family. Right, well, in 1620, my ancestors, you know, as I mentioned, uh, brought, bought six of the first 20 Africans that came to this country, so slavery has been a part of my family for uh, hundreds and hundreds of years from the very beginning. Uh, all black Woodsons, all white Woodsons go back to those original um, slaves and slave owners. Um, so it came kind of full circle when I realized this, seeing the picture of Carter G. Woodson on a stamp in 1984, and realized that I needed to pay attention to my background in that sense because I already had a PhD in African music and African drumming and I knew a lot about it and I wanted to bring that together uh, and certainly make an apology on behalf of my ancestors for that part of, of my life and our background. Uh, in the process of getting my PhD, I also learned about how talking drums were used in Africa to communicate huge distances. Wow. Uh, sound, sound bends in a, in a very dense uh, forest because of the heavy air. The uh, air actually bends the sound. So the option upon drums, and these are listed in the Roots of Rhythm curriculum, uh, are, uh, what are called talking drums of Ghana. They're named talking drums. And uh, while any drum I both can talk, because it, all you need really basically are two different sounds, a low and a high sound, because of the tone language of the, of the Arab, the Mena language of the treaty, and many African languages are tone languages, but there are six or seven or eight tones in a, in a given language. Hmm. Um, but those tones can be duplicated on African drums. So uh, Africans in this country, uh, when, they, when they were brought here, were still able to communicate, and that's why... Uh, slave owners and overseers realized this, that, that people were communicating with each other, and that's why drums were outlawed uh, very early on. Uh, uh, people switched to banjos, so the gingri was one of the instruments, for example, that was used. But no one said, well, that's no problem, so play, play that little gingri, and that gingri became the banjo. Wow. Um, and, but other drums were made and kept away from like, uh, slave owners because they were kept secret. Uh, in Brazil and other areas, um, the capoeira was a uh, disguised dance. It was a disguised martial art, but it was a dance, so people didn't know that the martial art from Angola was being passed on through a dance, and people played rattles and other things, but in reality, the drums, patterns, and all those rhythms were still being played on rattles. So the, the, the traditions kept going. So you go to a black church today, and you will see a lot of the rhythms that still are maintained that come directly, as far as I'm concerned, from directly from Africa, but they have been translated, um, uh, you know, into the needs of a particular religion. 
Um, now talk a little bit uh, about... That in Stuart, the Auction Pond we were talking about mm -hmm. uh, in Ghana, there's the Auction Pond and the Dundo that we played, the Talking Drum, that's also called the Talking Drum because it can change pitches. Right. Those are core, they're absolutely central, and now are being taught in the schools as, as a part of the poetry of those drums because it's a long uh, poetry that goes along with a ceremony. You start with a uh, ceremony, uh, any kind of uh, instrument or chief or something, you'll see that the option pond drum over the corner just playing, you know, because again, people go beep, they'll 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 go beep, they Every time, that's the way the traditions are passed on orally in the past through the talking drums. You also mention about question. you mention about the the hand, the uh, five fingers representing the lineage of the family, with the little baby thumb fingers starting yeah. ma ma ma. Talk a little bit about that. So the hand represents if you hold your hand up and spread it out like the number you say five. The thumb is the, is, is the hand represents the organization of a typical African drum ensemble. So the baby uh, is the thumb. And my teacher, his name was Kwasi Badu, uh, Kwasi Sunday Ba Born and Du Ken, his name was Sunday Born Ken, uh, Ken Born and his family, uh, Kwasi Badu said, told me that the baby, uh, if you touch your thumb to your little finger, next finger, and the next finger, it influences the whole. So the baby controls the whole family. That's what he's saying. But the bell, an African group controls the whole ensemble, so it's a repeated pattern. It goes nag 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 like a baby repeating over and over. Mm -hmm. I want this. Yeah. Give me, give me, give me that, but that. So it goes over and over, and then if it goes over and touches the little finger, the little finger comes in with a pattern. So it's nag 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 go go, nag 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 go go, nag 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 go go, nag 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 go go. And then if you touch your index finger with that, the baby goes nag 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 go go, little finger go go. So your part might be in a, in a rhythm or gong gong. And then you think of the two fingers in the middle, a low finger and a high finger, that represents the male and the female drums, the two talking drums, the octum pot. Wow. So that could be a set of flutes, it could be a group of xylophones, it could be any organization, but typically that's the way a group is organized. It's like a family, and that's the family unit that we talk about that's so important within African culture and certainly within uh, African American culture. Uh, the wow. Game over, and that's what slave owners tried to destroy. And in some cases were very successful, but in other cases were very unsuccessful uh, oh. in destroying the family unit. Now that's so an interesting that point. Core is something that I, this is something I didn't know and I didn't really understand until I had studied with the Master that I with. That's an amazing piece of information. Now, but now before we go, you know, before we get close to ending the show, I want you mentioned something about the height of the person being able to be uh, numbered out in the drum sounds. Like if somebody, one of the Asante tribesmen, they were really, really tall, they would go ten, 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 and then the taller they got, it would go ten, ten, ten. Yeah. yeah. Well, it, the, the first thing that you say on the drums is the name. Uh, the auction pond, when you go to the drums, you say the name of the first drum carver. Before you start with the first chief or anyone, you talked about the Ayang and the, the story of the Asante people. You don't start with the first chief. You start with a recognition of the first drum carver. And the first drum carver, his name was Chan Pong. So you say on the low drum, Chan Pong, two hits, boom, 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 boom. That says Chan Pong, Chan mm -hmm. Pong, Chan Pong. Mm -hmm. And on the high drum, the female drum, you say Tintin, tin, which means tall. Tintin, yeah. tin, you say it again, but this guy was really tall, so in, 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 in the name language, in tree language, you say tin, 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 to say really, really tall. <laughs> That's the first thing you say on the drum. So if you go up to a drum, you don't play rhythms, you don't warm up, you don't do anything. You go doom, 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 ding, 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 ding. That's the first thing you say you play on the drum, which is what you're saying is you say the name of the first carver. And then the next thing you say on the low drum, you say boom, 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 which is saying nam me, nam me, nam me, nam me, I'm walking, I'm walking, as you say. Wow. You say I'm running, I'm running, I'm running. Then you say me, I am running, me, 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 
let me succeed. Oh, wow. That, that is... The first thing huh. that you say on the ground, you say, chomp on, ting, 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 nom, 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 That's the first thing you say. Then you start reciting the poetry for all the different parts of the drum and, and talking to the spirit of the drum, the spirit uh -huh. of the pegs, the spirit of the head, the spirit of the tree, ball, cord, you have the He talks to all the different spirits of the world and says to the spirit, we are not going to play harmful music, we're going to play good music and respect your spirit, your ancestry, huh. and the whole story of the drum. Oh. Then after you go through all of that, finally you get to Chan Gong, excuse me, you get to Nana Ose Tutu, who's the first chief. So the first thing you do when you sit down and play the drums, any master drum will do this. They won't start with the first chief. That would be an insult. You start with a recognition of the first drummer and the first drum carver. Huh. So but there's... Had a... four, almost 400 years ago now with the first drums. The Atrampan is shape. Atrampan means bottle. So it looks like a bottle upside down. So. Wow, so that is a lot of information. Okay, so... We... Everybody okay? We got to end the show, but just for your listening pleasure today, I'm going to end our show. We're going to go out with Dr. Whitson, Craig, and two drum, Jimmy James, hitting the two drums and the Dondo. Oh, wait a minute, and I'm gonna be in on it. So, here we go. All right. All right. So here we go, six, eight. Where can we put the mic, right here? Gotta hold it. I'm gonna hold the mic with my left hand. Here we go. like